Um, let me first express my appreciation for the invitation to address this important uh, forum. Uh, in particular, I want to thank the sponsors, uh, the President of the Chamber of Deputies, Mr. Uh, Jan Hamacek, uh, the Minister of Interior, Mr. Milan Hovanek, uh, Mr. Ivan Gabal, uh, Chairman of the Subcommittee on Defense and Security Policy and Strategic Conceptions of the Czech Republic. I also want to thank the organizers, the European Values Think Tank, uh, and Mr. Radko uh, Hokowski and uh, its executive director. I want to thank the Martin Center uh, and its other supporters, the Conrad Adenauer Stiftung, the Visegrad Fund, the embassies of the United States, Great Britain, and France. Finally, I also want to recognize uh, this panel, uh, Chairman Gabal, Minister Yastrap and Ambassador Pohar. I've been given 10 minutes to speak, so I've now probably used up most of my time, and maybe I should just okay, quit 15, while I'm 15. ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, with your indulgence, I would like to say a few words about how the Islamic State uh, represents a unique international threat. To be sure, uh, there are aspects that are familiar from the past. Uh, like fascism, Nazism, Soviet communism, ISIS has ambitions to conquer the world, however ludicrous that might seem uh, at present. It rejects all international, one might even say civilized norms and rules of behavior, from engaging in genocide to the use of chemical weapons. Like past aggressors, it poses a direct and immediate territorial threat to its neighbors as it tries to carve out a new state uh, out of the territories of Syria, Iraq, and the Lebanon. Finally, like universalist ideologies uh, before it, such as Marxist-Leninism, uh, ISIS is metastasizing into insurgent and terrorist groups elsewhere, particularly in Africa. However, ISIS also has a unique, has unique threat characteristics, particularly as it affects the West. As the title of this forum recognizes, ISIS constitutes a primarily domestic or internal security threat in Europe, as it does in America. Crucially, however, it is an internal threat that emanates from abroad. Thus, it cannot be countered effectively without tackling its international origins. ISIS views the Muslim populations of our countries not merely as potential sources of material support uh, and manpower. It also seeks to turn them into a fifth column of terrorists. In this, Despite some dramatic and despicable acts, the Islamic State has been largely unsuccessful. Given the size of uh, the Muslim populations in several of our countries, it is a credit to their loyalty which must be recognized. Now, it seems doubtful that ISIS leaders believe that terrorism in the West will somehow bring about uh, a European caliphate. Rather, their goal, in my view, is twofold. First, to intimidate governments from opposing ISIS depredations in the Middle East, and more worrisome, provoke actions within Western countries that will drive our Muslim citizens and Islamic communities elsewhere in the world into their camp. Their hope is to create a vicious cycle a vicious cycle of terrorism and reaction, even rebellion, which will tear at the fabric of our societies. Related to this is a second unique international aspect of the ISIS threat. It plays out daily on our television screens. The Islamic State is creating waves of migrants, many losing their lives at sea and on Europe's highways. Make no mistake, these refugees, or immigrants, as unwitting and tragic as they are, constitute weapons of war 
from ISIS point of view. And again, their hope is that Western governments and publics will respond in ways that polarize and undermine our social and political solidarity. It is already creating serious strains within the European Union. A third international aspect of the ISIS threat is that only international action can contain, let alone eliminate it. Already, Western and some friendly Arab governments are cooperating uh, on the internal terrorist threat. A few allied and friendly governments are carrying the war to ISIS through the air. However, we would be fooling ourselves to believe that the bombing campaign will turn the tide against the Islamic State. One of the great ironies or even mysteries of the conflict with ISIS is why the Middle East countries, most exposed to the political and military threat of the Islamic State, are unwilling or incapable of responding effectively. These nations have millions of men under arms and the most advanced weapons, while ISIS has an estimated 30,000 fighters. Of course, these countries have their reasons and explanations. For example, Egypt and Saudi Arabia uh, say they are preoccupied in Yemen. But the bottom line is that their efforts against the Islamic State are marginal or non-existent. ISIS and other extremists surpass them all in their willingness to fight. U.S. efforts, American efforts, to create a so-called moderate military force in Syria has been, let's not mince words, an abject failure. One reason is that Americans have insisted that recruits sign a pledge that they will only fight ISIS and not others, including Assad's regime. Apart from removing this inexplicable constraint, what else can be done to degrade and destroy ISIS? First of all, I believe that a major international effort must now be made, which has to include Russia and Iran, to achieve a political resolution uh, in Syria. Of course, even if all other parties were to agree, ISIS would not. But then it would be isolated, and a new transitional Syrian government could lay claim to extensive international support. Second, ISIS could be taken up as a priority NATO concern. It is, after all, a threat to its members' security. What might the alliance do? One example is to provide a vehicle to recruit and train anti-ISIS fighters. The droves of Syrian and Iraqi young men flooding into Europe offer an important opportunity to do so. Now, I realize that migration and asylum are complex and politically sensitive issues in, in Europe, and I, I claim no expertise in this regard. There are EU rules, I'm aware, of, and uh, differing, even conflicting uh, national uh, practices. Yet, I would hope that in return for volunteering to fight ISIS, such young men and their families could be given special consideration in matters of asylum, work permits, housing, and other social benefits. NATO and the EU, their members as well, could leverage Turkey to halt the sale and transport of oil from ISIS-controlled territory. Steps could be taken to try to embargo that. Likewise, the Turks must be encouraged to effectively, ta uh, to effectively halt the flow of foreign fighters uh, to ISIS. It is crucial for movements such as ISIS to create a sense of historic inevitability, of unstoppability. This is essential for drawing recruits from the West and elsewhere. Notably, the ISIS advance has been largely stopped in recent months. It has tried to maintain public momentum by destroying defenseless archaeological treasures and murdering archaeologists. To stay in the headlines, I believe more efforts at terrorism in Europe and America by ISIS can be expected. 
This domestic security effect will not, uh, threat rather, will not abate until the international ISIS challenge is met. Considering perhaps some of the steps I've suggested plus others uh, that will undoubtedly surface in the course of this forum can help turn back the scourge uh, that ISIS poses uh, to civilization. Thank you.